Jayla was a very happy baby, always laughing. She was involved in a lot of things in, in high school, and she was also into cooking. That didn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never struggled with any health, major health issues or any health issues at all. You know, the most medicine I ever took was like Tylenol. Mostly, I would get like allergies or a cold once a year, and that would be all. Come the next morning, my whole body completely like, not numb, but I couldn't move. It was very weak, and I had ended up falling off the bed. When I opened up her, her door to her room and saw her passed out, I was like, oh my God, you know, like, she's gonna die, she's gonna die. And we have to get help right away. And I was so scared, I, I, was, I felt helpless. When she came into the emergency department, uh, uh, her heart stopped relatively soon afterward. The emergency physicians and the entire team had already resuscitated her, and that's when they called for a critical care consultation to bring her up to the ICU. And uh, she was already very, very ill. He said, we're doing everything we can, but there's one more thing that I can do, but it's risky. And I recall looking into his eyes and saying to him, Doctor, you do whatever it takes. It was an extraordinary event in that her heart stopped multiple times. We got it restarted multiple times. Her potassium levels were deadly and her acid levels were deadly. So I kept on giving her medications to make sure that she could survive another 10 minutes, 30 minutes, until we were able to get her stabilized. It's a testament to all of the staff at Peconic Bay Medical Center and to South Shore University Hospital and to the flight medics that we were able to get her there and save her life. I'm not sure that she would have survived. I've worked in other systems and I've worked in other healthcare environments. The integration that Northwell provides uh, um, was crucial for her to stabilize and for her to recover. Never been through something like that. Because like I said, the most I've ever was was a cold or something minor. So for me to not be able to help myself in that state and know what's going on, it was, it was pretty scary. I remember the first line he said. So it was something about Tyler Perry. I know, I know. Yes. Don't confuse me with Tyler Perry because everyone thinks I, I look like him. And, and, yeah. and we just laughed. Then he sang for us and we were just like taken Maybe. away. Like, wow. And just the conversation that we had with him and the connection, it was, it was genuine. What's so cool is when I can sing a song and someone lights up that way to uplift her spirit and I could be a part of that. I mean, <laughs> that's powerful stuff. She needed a, um, a special testing done they had to put like probes in her head, but they were unable to because her hair was very thick and... So Jayla, with her brave little self, said, I will shave my hair. And we were like, are you sure you want to do that? And she said, yes, if I need this test to get better, I want to shave my head. So we found a barber that was vaccinated and available to get into the hospital. And just taking that extra step to show her that we wanted it to go well, I think it, it gave her so much uh, comfort knowing that she was safe. It was just a wonderful moment and it went perfectly. He goes beyond, I'm sure for everybody, because that's the type of person that he is. He sh it shows that he has a genuine heart. It really is my DNA to be there for others. To be in this role and honor her every day in that way, I'm living 
a life beyond my wildest dreams. It's a very simple life, but it's extremely rewarding. Oh, oh, ooh. you are so beautiful oh, to me. How are you feeling? Oh, great. Great. A lot better. Everything is 100% better. Well, you need to know, and both mom and dad need to know, that you guys are super inspiring to thank, all of thank us. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I went into critical care to help people at their darkest hour, trying to put together pieces of the puzzle, trying to stabilize and trying to get them better. This is the most impactful case of my career. Maybe I didn't know it at the time, uh, but maybe I went to medical school for Jayla, and Jayla wasn't even born yet. Today, compared to September 24th, it's like these events never happen. I'm so grateful. I, I pray all the time to God and, and thank Him because none of this would have been possible without Him. Today has been all about how the team goes beyond just medical care and really caring for the whole person. So Madeline, Edgar, can, is there anything that pops to mind that we can share with the team of what they did for you that went beyond medical care that really helps you through the, this journey? I just love the way we were not judged. I love the way the simple things meant a lot to us, even asking us, are you okay? Uh, can we get this for you or do you need that? And also accommodating us to stay with her in her room to us, is, it was huge because obviously with everything going on, you know, the last thing is you, you, your daughter's in distress and you don't want not to be there in case something, you know, huge happens. Well, I think you said something really that struck me is that you were happy to not be judged. And it makes me imagine that some people are coming into the hospital thinking they're going to be judged. Or maybe they don't even come in at all. And that the little things that you do every day to make people know they won't be, they're telling other people in the community, maybe someone who would never have come in comes in and they find that thing earlier than they would have. What was it like for you, these things that you talked about that make you feel grateful now, how did that help you get through what you were going through? Seeing the gifted hands that were placed by her side and allowing them to do their, their job and bring her, bring her back to us gave us hope. And that's all we needed was that little, like a grain of salt, that hope. I'm sitting next to someone who I know brings a lot of hope and a lot of warmth to a lot of people and you formed a very special connection with this family and you did it by sharing a very unique gift to you, your, your singing, but everyone here has a very unique gift. So can you speak to how do, how can people connect to a patient through their unique gifting to give them that grain of hope that they need? I don't have the schooling like a lot of the doctors, you know, I don't have degrees and those such things in the education and such. But what I do have is a heart to serve like each and every person in this room. And that's why you're here. And so with that, it puts us in a position to get very creative in how we can be of service to others. Um, I cannot do what I do on a daily basis without everyone in this room, from dietary to the doctors to the housekeepers. And I, I feel like um, over time, we, we get more and more um, inspired by each other, um, feeding off of each other's gifts and talents. So that way we can uh, have moments like this. And I just have to say, while I have this stage, I was really lost in my own life and I met your family and uh, just being in a position to show up every day and to serve you all gave me purpose again. And for that, I am very, very grateful. I haven't told you enough. Um, you know how much I love y'all. If you look at our text thread, it is hilarious. Um, 
But with that being said, my message to everyone in this room is just very simple. You know, if we just speak to each other with kindness and we listen to one another with compassion, I mean, through love, we can just help each other. And I think that has been displayed here today. Healthcare ain't easy. It's not. And so how do we, uh, as a team, inspire one another to bring our best for everyone all the time? I think that it all comes to this idea of compassion, this feeling that we are together, we are, we are family. And so how can we support one another and love one another so that we can provide the best possible care that we can? And, and, and it all comes back to compassion. I, I want to wrap it up with you, Jayla. You've had kind of a privileged position of, of you've met over 100 healthcare professionals, made probably more than that in your journey. So what would you leave them with uh, on their journey of, of, of what they're trying to do? Well, to start off with, you are seen. Everything you do does matter. And even though you may think it may not affect somebody, even the smallest things do. I also want to point that no matter what your position is at Northwell, you still make a difference. Every single person that walked into my hospital room made an impact on my life going forward. They showed me that we all go through similar things or we all go through our own problems and we could still come together. It was love shown through everyone. And that could be shown through a simple conversation, a high and by. Just to show that I was not being ignored meant the most to me. It's always going to stick to me. And I will be forever grateful for everyone. And thank you. <laughs>